Lincoln snapped back to the present, looked at Cusick, and swallowed hard. I'm sorry, Vincent Oligak's sick, Lincoln managed to say, then quickly blurted, I'll just go to the hotel. Dad said there's one here. I'll call him. Oh, you don't have to do that. I will take you to Vincent Oligak, all right. He sent me to get you. Lincoln managed to work his mouth into a smile. The wind struck the terminal with a mournful wolf howl. The building shuddered. He reached for his return jack ticket just as his baggage came through a large door in the metal-walled building, together with a blast of cold air. Resolutely, he picked up his duffel and suitcase. Okay, he said. Please take me to Vincent Oligak. You cannot go as you are, Cusick said. You need Eskimo clothes. He is on the ice. I'll be all right, the boy said. I've skied at zero in these clothes. Cusick smiled at him politely. I will take you home first. You can leave your bags there, Lincoln nodded. With his duffel in one hand, his suitcase in the other, he followed Cusick out of the terminal. At the top of the steps, he looked out on the village of Barrow. It was not easy to see, for it was white on the white landscape. Everything was covered with hoarfrost. Utility poles and wires, buildings, their doorways, and parked snowmobiles. The air glittered and flashed with what seemed to be smithereens of mica, but which was sub-zero mist. The cold was working its white magic to hide the little town at the top of the world. Hey, it's beautiful, Lincoln exclaimed. Then he saw two four-wheel drive vehicles that had been left running so they would not freeze up while their drivers waited for their passengers. He also noticed that only one person walked the cold white streets, and then he saw why. The large thermometer on the side of the terminal registered 35 below zero. Lincoln's breath crystallized on his eyelashes, and he almost did not see Cusick go around a mountain of plowed snow. He ran down the steps and found him beside an orange snowmobile machine. The sight of the big ski not only cheered Lincoln, but banished his doubts about staying in Barrow. From the looks of things, he would be driving snow machines to get around, and that would be just great. His dad was right. This was going to be a wonderful adventure. Hop on, Cusick said. I'll give you a tour show you what finding oil on our ancestral land has done for the Eskimo. Lincoln swung onto the seat behind Cusick and balanced himself by holding a piece of luggage in each hand. The machine shot forward. He grabbed with his knees to keep from shooting backward into the snow. Cusick steered the machine around the snow pile and sped down the main street. The houses stood far back from the broad main drive, they were small to conserve heat. Some were almost buried under drifts of snow. When the sun hit them, they twinkled. I am not on my planet, Lincoln said to himself. Barrow is not just different, as Dad says. It's otherworldly.